with something else?
Good morning, everybody. How is everybody today? Well, that sounds par for the course, John. Um, I hate to sound like Joel Olstein, but I'm going to try to start out with something funny that I heard yesterday, and it made me laugh, so I'm going to try it out, besides my usual weather report. Um, did you know that Moses was pretty good on technology? He was the first one to break tablets and the Ten Commandments at the same time. That was nursing home humor, so if you didn't like it, it's all right. But anyway, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kathy. I'd like to welcome you to First Baptist Church, and I'd like to welcome those of you online. Hi, Wheezy. I hope you're out there somewhere in computer land and all the rest of you, Amy, and so on. Um, our text today comes from 1 Peter. If you're following along in the hymnal Bible, it is page one, or 1891 on the left-hand side, sort of in the middle. It says, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can be, pray Above all, love each other deeply because love co covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. That's a tough one, isn't it? Each one should take whatever gift has been received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ to him be the glory and the power. Amen. This is the word of the Lord.
were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Do that again. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. There's nothing impossible. My hands lifted. 
Okay, remember this part has the echo that you got to sing out, okay? We got a little microphone that picks up the room ambiance, and so our online audience needs to hear your voices, okay? shadows deepen we do do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through we do do you wish that you could see it all made new second verse this all creation groaning it is is a new creation coming it is is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is is it good that we remind ourselves of this Father truly love us. Does the Spirit move among us? And if Jesus our Messiah forever those who love us, He does. Does our God intend to dwell us?
more blessing and honor and world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the truth of what we just sang, that you are worthy to receive all of our praise, all of our attention, all of our worship. We pray that you would um, fill this place with your presence. We pray that you would uh, help us to enter into uh, your story, what you're doing with us and for us and in us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I really want to thank our, our sound folks. Missy uh, is kind of newer to our church. Thank you so much, Missy, for being here early. She gets here early and sets things up for us. Thank you, thank you. Really appreciate your service. Um, I mean, yeah, what a, what a gift. What a gift. Um, we always... Uh, say the Lord's Prayer together. I don't want to forget that because it is a time to uh, pray what the Lord has, us, has uh, invited us to pray. We do this each week, not out of mere rote or sense of duty, but uh, as, a way to, um, as, the, as a way to put into action what Jesus taught. Uh, the disciples figured out that Jesus' source of strength and power and life came from his prayer life with his heavenly Father. And so the disciples said, we want in on that. Teach us how to do that. So he taught this prayer. So uh, would you join me in praying this prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, uh, Kathy and I did not coordinate the opening uh, welcome time where she, she prays about what scripture to read. And so, uh, once again, that scripture just fit really well with what we just sang about our God in, intending to dwell again with us, to renew all things. You know, we groan in this, uh, in this uh, life, and we long for, 
We long for God to make things right. The end of all things is near. Uh, every, every day we get closer to that. So uh, thank you, Kathy. Appreciate you being obedient to the Lord uh, in what he has for you to read uh, this morning. Well, we're glad you're here. We've got a different kind of service today. So I want to move through our announcements real quick and get on to, uh, to, um, to the rest of the service. The elders have asked me to talk less today, keep it short today. So uh, I just want to remind you that our mission here is to invite you to experience the empowering love of Jesus Christ. We love this spot that the Lord has given us here at the corner of Floor and Commercial to to put that into practice, to put that into action. You know, love is not just a feeling or just a or just a, uh, an emotion. Love is a decision. It's a, dis- a decision every day to d- die to yourself and serve others and to love others. And so. Um, No place better to do that than here in downtown Bellingham. We want to see you experience the presence of God in worship. We want to see you grow in grace through spiritual formation, which is the process of being formed into Christ for the sake of others. That's what spiritual formation is. Uh, And then we want to see you empower others with that love that you yourself have received. Again, This is not just for ourselves, it's for other people, it's for the sake of the world. Spiritual formation is not just for ourselves, it's for the sake of the world. Experiencing God in worship is not just for ourselves, it's for the sake of the world. It's always for other people. A few things going on in the life of the church that I'll move through pretty quickly. Tomorrow is the Esther Circle Women's Bible Study, am I correct on that? Okay, thank you. Uh, Thursday night is the worship night. And prayer night, not last Thursday. So if you showed up last Thursday, that's on me. Well, it's not on me. They changed it. They changed the date on me at the last minute. So I didn't know. It's actually this Thursday at 7 o'clock. You're welcome to join us. And then uh, next Sunday, a very special worship gathering. We are going to be gathering with a number of other churches at Cordata Presbyterian Church. And we're going to be welcoming the uh, Native American youth group called Mending Wings. Uh, and they're going to come and, and help us know what they're all about, what their mission is in, in reaching Native Americans for Christ and put on a program for us. And so that's going to be uh, next week at 10 a.m. So we're not going to meet here next week. We're going to meet over at Cordata Presbyterian Church. We'll probably send you a number of emails this week to, re- to remind you of that. Uh, there is a sign-up. We'd love some help with uh, more elements of the service, ushering, uh, and host homes. We could use a couple more host homes uh, to host a couple of the youth that are going to be uh, staying here in, in Bellingham. It's, it's less than 12 hours that they stay at your house, okay? So all you, all you got one meal, breakfast, and we're going to do dinner and games and stuff at Cordata Prez on Saturday night. They sleep at your place Sunday, uh, Saturday night. You get them there by 9 o'clock Sunday morning, and it's a blessing to them. All right, and then the week after that, I think I just went off. Oh, I'm on. Okay. And the week after that, June, June 4th, is our Partnership Renewal Sunday. We'll say more about that as we get into it. All right, for now, I want to shift our time to our uh, time of giving God his tithe and our offerings. So I want to uh, invite you to say and pray this prayer with me as a way to reorient our hearts each week towards a posture of joy and giving in our uh, time of generosity. Would you join me? Holy Father, there is nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and am belong to you, bought with the blood of Jesus. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world that you cannot abide. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord, who love him with free hearts and serve him with renewed minds, who withstand the delusion of riches that chokes the word, whose hearts are in your kingdom and not in the systems of the world. I am determined to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money 
that you may trust me with true riches. Above all, I am determined to be generous because you, Father, are generous. It is the delight of your daughters and sons to share your traits and to show what you are like to all the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me in that. Best way to give is online. We've got a little black box in the back as well. Love to invite you to do that. Okay, at this point, we like to take a moment to say hello to one another here in the place. So we've got a uh, couple new friends here today. We'd love to say hi to them or welcome some new old friends back. So would you take a moment? Would you stand? Would you say hello to one another? Greet each other in the name of the Lord. All right, thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Want to say a special welcome to those joining us online. By name, Jim Reichman. He is doing double duty. He's here in person and online as well. <laughs> Gladys, we're glad you're here, Gladys. Amy Cloud, glad you're here. Ben and Wheezy, Leroy. Mm. And three additional guests who remain to be named that I can't tell. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us. Okay, I'm going to invite you guys to sit down and ha take a seat. Bye, I'm go We're going to read from a couple of different scripture texts today to ground ourselves in our passage for today, our teaching time today. The first one is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and just one verse from here, verse 3. We will read more of this chapter 12 on June 4th, when we have our Partnership Renewal Sunday. But for now, I just want to get this one verse in there. Paul says this, therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. And then our second teaching is very famous at the end of 
Matthew's gospel, he writes, Then Jesus came to them, his disciples, and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the way that you got a hold of the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Matthew uh, to inspire them to write down uh, their letters or their accounts of Jesus' life and his words and the way that their words have so much relevance and application and meaning and purpose for our lives even today in 2023. What, what amazing gift it is that you are alive and active and at work. Help us to trust that. Help us to trust you at work in the world and in our lives and especially in this particular church's life here at the corner of Florida Commercial, First Baptist that you have, you have given this church to this city, you've given this people to this city to serve, to bless, to witness to you, to give witness to what you have done. And I pray that you would strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit to do so. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you realize that what we're doing right now is a miracle? We are living a miracle today. We are a living miracle today. For a group of people to gather like this in worship and to say Jesus is Lord is a miracle. As Paul said, for no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. And I'm also thinking about the different voting preferences of many of you. I'm also thinking about the different situations in life that many of you are bringing into this place today. I'm also thinking about the various uh, pasts that you are bringing into this place today. What we're doing today is a miracle. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God, except if something outside of ourselves, something supernatural, makes that possible. That's one of the things that makes the church so different from any other human organization, right? We do not exist from ourselves. We don't make ourselves up. We didn't make this thing up. Hey, let's let's gather all different kinds of people together from different denominations, different backgrounds, different voting preferences. Let's all come together and be kind to each other and be united around one thing, that Jesus is Lord. We couldn't make that up. That's a gift from God. We are living a miracle here today. We do not exist from ourselves. We do not exist for ourselves. We do not exist to make our name great. We do not exist to make our reputation more famous. We are here to make the name of Jesus Christ more famous. The church gives witness that the name of the Lord is great. I mean, the name of the Lord is great in and of itself, But we are invited to partner with God in sharing that good news with the world. We are partners in the gospel. I say all this because uh, we are in this season of life here in our church where we are preparing for our first annual Partnership Renewal Sunday, June 4th, 2023. Partnership is how we've talked about Uh, is how we talk about membership here. We made a big change to our bylaws last summer to implement this Partnership Renewal Sunday where we give everyone an opportunity to uh, recommit themselves in an intentional way to be a part of what God is doing here for that next year, for the next year. Partnering together, we are partnering together with God, with each other to live out the mission that he has given us. I say it every week. We want to invite you to experience the empowering love of Jesus Christ. We really want as many of you as possible to be here in person on that day. 
as much as you can make it, as much as you can do to be here in person, we'd love for you to be here in person that day. We're going to have a cookout afterwards, so if you don't come for anything else, come for the food. So we're going to be asking you to bring a side dish. The church will, bring, will uh, provide the hamburgers and, and hot dogs. Um, and if you can bring the side food as well, that would be wonderful. Uh, we're going to be updating our pictures and information for uh, an updated church directory. It's been about four or five years since we've had an updated directory. A lot of new faces since that time, of course. And so we want to uh, update that so that uh, you will have uh, an idea of who's in your church family and a way to contact them uh, if you want to. Otherwise, we're going to put this picture in the directory, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. We won't put this picture in the directory for you. <laughs> I, I do not draw that myself. But. Uh, on that day, June 4th, we're going to worship together. We're going to invite you, like I said, to be intentional about committing to another year of partnership for that next year. The idea is to renew that partnership each year as a regular rhythm of the life of the church, okay? And this is what's going to determine uh, who the elders know are partners or members of the church, all right? So it's a, it's a, very, it's a serious thing that we are inviting you to sign your name to. Uh, we decided June 4th because that is the Sunday after Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday is the birthday of the church. We see that in Acts chapter 2. Jesus pours out his Holy Spirit onto this group of disciples, and the church is born. And so in that spirit of Pentecost, we wanted to uh, make that day the day that we do partnership renewal. And so it's going to be uh, an, an intentional day to walk through what that, what that means. As we prepared for this very first one, I don't think we're going to do this every single year, but for that first one, we are, we've been walking through the last six or seven weeks, eight weeks, uh, our core values, our mission, vision values, what makes us us. So uh, we have talked about our core value of fierce love. We've talked about our core value of empowering others. We've talked about our core value of having a thriving community. And last week we talked about the living word of God. You can see that on your handout as well. And so today I just want to set the stage a little bit for that June 4th Partnership Renewal Sunday where we're going to invite you to actually sign the church covenant as shown here on the other side of your handout. I'll have a bigger version of this on June 4th that you can sign your name to. Now, <clears throat> at the beginning, I'll, I need to remind us that a covenant is different than a contract. We're not asking you to sign a contract. We're inviting you to sign a covenant. Um, a covenant is different than a contract. A contract is between two parties who say, I will give myself to you in this relationship only if, there's, a, there's an only if in there, only if you fulfill certain expectations, only if you fulfill certain obligations, and as soon as you violate those terms, then I'm out. I can be out of this contract. A covenant is different. A covenant is between two parties who say, I will give myself to you no matter what comes our way. So I'm thinking about my wedding day. I didn't enter into a contract with my wife. I entered into a covenant with her. There were vows. There were questions of intent. And so in a very similar way, we're going to do that next week as well. There's going to be this, uh, this covenant that we're walking through here. And then there'll be questions of intent as well. All right? Again, a, a covenant is a way to say to each other, this is how we will be with each other. This is how we will be for each other, even, and with the, even if and when the other person reneges on their end. So it means we're taking seriously Christ's command to love one another. It means we're taking seriously Christ's command to, uh, to be the body of Christ. It means we're raising the threshold. We're being an int intentional about raising the threshold of what it means to be a part 
of what God is doing here at FBC to be a partner in the gospel. All right, so we're being intentional of asking you and inviting you to be deliberate about being a part of what God is doing here. We want to be deliberate in giving some language to how we are going to be in relationship to each other. Today, we're just going to talk a little bit about the preamble. Having been led by the Spirit of God to profess our faith in Jesus Christ, and having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. Again, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. No one can say, no one can profess their faith in Jesus Christ except by the Spirit of God. It is a miracle. We are living a miracle today. If you profess your faith in Jesus Christ, that is a miracle. This may be obvious to some, but in our world today, it may need to be more clear or may need to be made clear. To be a part of the church... You need to be a Christian. To be a a member of the church, you need to be a Christian. Now, that word Christian, we've lost a little bit of what that word means today in this part of the world, which is called the West. Oftentimes, that word Christian can just be a title in name only, what we call nominal Christianity, a Christian in name only. Like, I was born in America, therefore I'm a Christian. Or sometimes the word Christian is associated with mere intellectual assent to religious principles or religious statements. I prayed the prayer, now now I'm in. I can go on about my regular life. Or, uh, yeah, 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 I know about God, I know about Jesus. I'm good to go. But in the truest sense of the word, a Christian is a person who is a follower of Christ, a little Christ, a Christian. He or she is a disciple of Christ, a student of Christ. Uh, Another word that I really resonate with these days is the word apprentice. A Christian is one who apprentices themselves to Christ, right? An apprentice works with a master to learn from the master the skills necessary to do all that the master does, right? So we have master electricians, master carpenters. They take on journeymen and apprentices to learn the works of the master. We, as Christians, apprentice ourselves to Jesus to learn from him the skills to do what Jesus does, The way Dallas Willard puts it, one of my favorite quotes, am I living my life the way Jesus would live my life if he were me? Am I living my life the way Jesus would live my life if he were me? Another way we put it is question number five. A maturing disciple or apprentice or student or follower of Jesus at FBC regularly asks themselves, is my current lifestyle sustainable? It's just a different way of asking what Dallas Willard puts so well. Am I living, am I learning to live my life the way Jesus would live my life if he were me? I should have the word learning. Am I learning to live my life the way Jesus would live my life if he were me, right? So the first statement of our preamble of the covenant puts the question to us, have you professed your faith in Jesus Christ? Have you taken that step of saying yes to Jesus and trusting him with all of your life? That's what faith is. Faith is not just believing in something that you know ain't true, as Mark Twain put it. Faith is not opposed to knowledge. It is based on knowledge. Faith is not belief without proof. It is trust without reservations, as Elton Trueblood put it. To have faith in something is simply to live as if that something is true, as John Mark Comer puts it. One of my pastoral heroes passed away last Friday, Tim Keller. Did you hear about that? So Tim Keller passed away last Friday, um, and I don't know, it was weird. I told Bethany this. It's like, you know, I didn't know the guy except from what I read and heard from him in his writings and his podcasts and his teachings, um, but he was like, he's like the first person 
that who has died that I've known just, you know, out there somewhere, not personally, that I've like felt it, like felt really, really sad about, uh, about this person passing away. He was such a, an important part of my life and, and so many other people's lives as well, just uh, able to communicate the truths of the gospel in a powerful way while also affirming the humanity of people who disagreed with him, people who pushed back with him, people who hated him. He was very, uh, he was just a, a model pastor that way. So he, he passed away. So I had to include a quote from him about faith today. He says, it's not the strength of your faith, but the object of your faith that actually saves you. Strong faith in a weak branch is fatally inferior to weak faith in a strong branch. So like if you're hanging off the side of the cliff and you've got a strong grip on a very weak branch off the side of the cliff, it doesn't matter how strong your grip is on that weak little branch, it's inferior to uh, a stronger branch on the side of the cliff, no matter how, ba- how barely you're hanging on. So it's not the strength of your faith, but the object of your, of your faith that actually saves you. Being a partner or a member of the church begins with having been led by the Spirit of God to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, the strongest name that you could ever put your faith in. Secondly, we say it this way, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, being a partner of the church means going public with that faith by being baptized in water. Baptists believe in what's called believer's baptism, where a person hears the good news of what God has done in and through the person and work of Jesus Christ and is able to make the decision to be baptized, to respond to that good news with baptism. Uh, If you've ever seen a baptism, the baptism is rich in symbolism, rich in meaning. It's, it's It's a living parable, if you will. You are immersed in the water as a symbol of dying to yourself, right? You're buried with Christ in the likeness of death. Very powerful symbol. You're dying to your way of life. You're dying to yourself. And then when you come out, out of the water, it's a symbol of being raised to walk in the newness of life that Christ gives. Quite the celebration and party. So this begs the question, have you been baptized? If you have not been baptized, then talk with me. We need to get you baptized. We got, it's right here behind behind these doors here. I'd be glad to fill it up and baptize you so that you can be an intentional part of the church here. So having done those two things, you're a Christian, you've been baptized, We say here at First Baptist, we do now solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant with God and with each other. You notice those two words there we're asking you to consider, solemnly and joyfully. Solemnly, uh, this is not in the sense of like um, a begrudging duty or obligation, but uh, in the sense of taking, taking it seriously, not being flippant about being part of the church, not not, uh, we, we want you to be intentional about being part of the church. If not here, then somewhere. Okay? And joyfully, we gladly do this together. The joy of the Lord is our strength to live this out. All right? So next time we meet on June 4th, we're going to talk through the rest of it briefly and then give you an opportunity to prayerfully consider responding to what the Lord has for you. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a moment to respond to the work of the Holy Spirit. I never want, I don't want to uh, leave this moment. Maybe you haven't actually said yes to Jesus Christ. Uh, And maybe you haven't actually said, yes, I want to be, I want to be baptized. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to take communion together. Then we're going to sing a song of response together. Then after that, like I've said, The elders are going to um, lead us in a uh, a survey of the church, among other things as well, okay? But let me pray. Let Let me pray. Let me shift us into communion. And again, we take communion here together each week because uh, we need to be reminded of the grace 
uh, of God that is empowering us for this life. And so this uh, moment, this event, we use these uh, prepackaged materials here. There's a top layer that uh, reveals the wafer that represents the body of Christ. And then there's the bottom layer that re reveals the cup that is the, represents the blood of Christ. <clears throat> and so, as we come to the Lord's table together, this is an invitation from Jesus himself. It's not from me. You don't have to be a member here at the church to participate with us. We just invite those who um, love Jesus and want to love him more to come and receive this from, from him. We remember on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood, which is for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, um, for sending your son to die the death that was to be ours and who lived the life that we ought to have lived. We pray that you would um, fill us with your power and strength to be who you want us to be, to respond in faith to you, for the first time or for the hundredth time, Lord. I pray that you would draw us deeper into your love and trust of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.